All right. <clears throat> so, I missed Thursday's two hour reading. Today's Friday, 12.46 in the morning, so we're at night. Um, first time missing it, but I'm still going to do the two hours. Um, I did do the 30 minute uh, teaching though. Um, <laughs> this is what I got in the blue. Not really the best day for me, um, but um, my video was uh, No Compromise, No Surrender by R.C. Sproul. He referenced Luke chapter 24, verses 46-53. Church in Greek is Ecclesia. That's what I got. We left off on uh, Job. Um... Finishing Job chapter 33, and now we are at Job chapter 34, so we're going to finish the book of Job today, and then, um, what's the next book, Psalms? Oh snap, I think it is Psalms. It is, wow, alright, this is going to be cool. I always have a little water when I do my videos. Never have a full water bottle. All right. <clears throat> so, chapter 34 in the book of Job, NIV translation, chapter 1. Then Elihu said, Hear my words, you wise men. Listen to me, you men of learning. For the ear tests words, as the tongue tastes food. Let us discern for ourselves what is right. Let us learn together what is good. Verse 5, Job says I am innocent, but God denies me justice. Although I am right, I am considered a liar. Although I am guiltless, his arrow inflicts an incurable wound. Is there anyone like Job who drinks scorn like water? He keeps company with evildoers. He associates with the wicked. For he says there is no profit in trying to please God. Verse 10, so listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do evil from the Almighty to do wrong. He repays everyone for what they have done. He brings on them what their conduct deserves. It is unthinkable that God would do wrong, that the Almighty would pervert justice. Who appointed him over the earth? Who put him in charge of the whole world? If it were his intention, and he withdrew his spirit and breath, Verse 15, all humanity would perish together and mankind would return to the dust. If you have understanding, hear this. Listen to what I say. Can someone who hates justice govern? Will you condemn the just and mighty one? Is he not the one who says to kings you are worthless and to nobles you are wicked? Who shows no partiality to princes and does not favor the rich over the poor? For they are all the work of his hands. Verse 20. They die in an instant, in the middle of the night. The people are shaken, and they pass away. The mighty are removed without human hand. His eyes are on the ways of mortals. He sees their every step. There is no deep shadow, no utter darkness, where evil doers can hide. God has no need to examine people further, that they should come before him for judgment. Without inquiry, he shatters the mighty and sets up others in their place. Verse 25, because he takes notes of their deeds, he overthrows them in the night and they are crushed. He punishes them for their wickedness where everyone can see them because they turned from following him and had no regard for any of his ways. They caused the cry of the poor to come before him so that he heard the cry of the needy. But if he remains silent, who can condemn him? If he hides his face, who can see him? Yet he is over individual and nation alike. Verse 30. To keep the godless from ruling, from laying snares for the people. Someone Suppose someone says to God, I am guilty, but will offend no one. Teach me what I cannot see. If I have done wrong, I will not do so again. 
Should God then reward you on your terms? When you refuse to repent? You must decide, not I. So tell me what you know. Men of understanding declare. Wise men who hear me say to me. Verse 35. Job speaks without knowledge. His words lack insight. Oh, that Job might be tested to the utmost for answering like a wicked man. To his sin he adds rebellion. Scornfully he claps his hands among us and multiplies his words against God. That completes chapter 34. Chapter 35, verse 1. Then Elihu said, Do you think this is just? You say I am in the right, not God. Yet you ask him, What profit is it to me? And what do I gain by not sinning? I would like to reply to you and to your friends with you. Verse 5. Look up the heavens and see. Gaze at the clouds so high above you. If you sin, how does that affect him? If your sins are many, what does that do to him? If you are righteous, what do you give to him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness only affects humans like yourself, and your righteousness only other people. People cry out under a load of oppression. They plead for relief from the arm of the powerful. Verse 10. But no one says, Where is God my maker, who gives songs in the night? Who teaches us more than he teaches the beasts of the earth, and makes us wiser than the birds in the sky. He does not answer when people cry out, because of the arrogance of the wicked. Indeed, God does not listen to their empty plea. The Almighty pays no attention to it. How much less, then, will he return when you say that you do not see him, that your case is before him, and you must wait for him? Verse 15, And further, that his anger never punishes, and he does not take the least notice of wickedness. So Job opens his mouth with empty talk. Without knowledge, he multiplies words. And that completes chapter 35. Chapter 36, verse 1. Elihu continued, Bear with me a little longer, and I will show you that there is more to be said in God's behalf. I get my knowledge from afar. Excuse me. I will ascribe justice to my Maker. Be assured that my words are not false. One who has perfect knowledge is with you. Verse 5. God is mighty, but despises no one. He is mighty and firm in his purpose. He does not keep the wicked alive, but gives the afflicted their rights. He does not take his eyes off the righteous. He enthrones them with kings and exalts them forever. But if people are bound in chains, held fast by cords of affliction, he tells them what they have done, that they have sinned arrogantly. Verse 10. He makes them listen to correction and commands them to repent of their evil. If they obey and serve him, they will spend the rest of their days in prosperity and their years in contentment. But if they do not listen, they will perish by the sword and die without knowledge. The godless in heart harbor resentment. Even when he feathers them, they do, cry, cr do, they, they do not cry for help. They die in their youth among male prostitutes of the shrines. Verse 15. But those who suffer, he delivers in their suffering. He speaks to them in their affliction. He is wooing you from the jaws of distress to a spacious place free from restriction, to the comfort of your table laden with choice food. But now you are laden with the judgment due the wicked. Judgment and justice have taken hold of you. Be careful that no one entices you by riches do not let a large bribe turn you aside. Would your wealth or even all your mighty efforts sustain you so you would not be in distress? Verse 20. Do not long for the night to drag people away from their homes. Be aware. I'm sorry. Beware. I guess it's the same thing, right? Beware of turning to evil, which you seem to prefer to affliction. God is exalted in his power. Who is a teacher like him? Who has prescribed his ways for him, or said to him, you have done wrong? Remember to extol his work, which people have praised in song. Verse 25, all humanity has seen it. Mortals gaze on it from afar. How great is God beyond our understanding? The number of his years is past finding out. He draws up the drops of water, which distill as rain to the streams.
The clouds pour down their moisture and abundant showers fall on mankind. Who can understand how he spreads out the clouds, how he thunders from his pavilion? Verse 30. See how he scatters his lightning about him, bathing the depths of the sea. This is the way he governs the nations and provides food in abundance. Wow. He fills his hands with lightning. I love that. And commands it to strike its mark. His thunder announces the coming storm. Even the cattle make known its approach. I like that. That completes chapter 36. Chapter 37. <clears throat> Verse 1. At this my heart pounds and leaps from its place. Listen. Listen to the roar of his voice, to the rumbling that comes from his mouth. He unleashes the lightning, his lightning beneath the whole heaven and sends it to the ends of the earth. After that comes the sound of his roar. He thunders with his majestic voice. When his voice resounds, he holds nothing back. Verse 5, God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. He says to the snow fall on the earth and to the rain shower, be a mighty downpour, so that everyone he has made may know his work. He stops all people from their labor. The animals take cover. They remain in their dens. The tempest comes out from its chamber, the cold from the driving winds. Verse 10. The breath of God produces ice, and the broad waters become frozen. He loads the clouds the clouds with moisture. He scatters his lightning through them. At his direction, they swirl around over the face of the whole earth to do whatever he commands them. He brings the clouds to punish people, or to water his earth and show his love. Listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's wonders. Verse 15. Do you know how God controls the clouds and makes his lightning flash? Do you know how the clouds hang poised, those wonders of him who has perfect knowledge? You who swelter in your clothes when the land lies hushed under the south wind, can you join him in spreading out the skies, hard as a mirror of cast bronze? Tell us what we should say to him. We cannot draw up our case because of our darkness. Verse 20. Should he be told that I want to speak? Would anyone ask to be swallowed up? Now no one can look at the sun, bright as it is in the skies, after the wind has swept them clean. Out of the north he comes in golden splendor. God comes in awesome majesty. The Almighty is beyond our reach and exalted in power. In his justice and great righteousness he does not oppress. Verse 24. Therefore people revere him, for does he not regard, have regard for all the wise in heart? That completes chapter 37. <clears throat> chapter 38, verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. In deep, hold on one sec. Verse 4, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Verse 5, who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who, sketched, who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? 
while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness? Verse 10. When I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, This far you may come and no further, here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. Verse 15. The wicked are denied their light and their upraised arm is broken. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the deepest darkness? Have you comprehended the vast ex expanses of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. What is the way to the abode of light? And where does darkness reside? Verse 20. Can you take them to their places? Can you know the paths of their dwellings? Surely you know, for you were already born. You have lived so many years. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow, or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? What is the way to the place where the lightning is dispersed, or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth? Verse 25. Who cuts a channel for the torrents of rain, and a path for the thunderstorm? To water a land where no one lives, an uninhabited desert. To satisfy a desolate wasteland and make it sprout with grass. Does the rain have a father? Who fathers the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? Verse 30. When the waters become hard as snow, as stone, when the surface of the deep is frozen. Can you bind the chains of the Pilates? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons? Or lead out the bear with its cubs? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Verse 35. Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you? Here we are. Who gives the ibis wisdom? Or gives the rooster understanding? Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Who can tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clouds of earth stick together do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions verse 40 when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in a thicket who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to god and wander about for lack of food that yeah, concludes chapter 38 chapter 39 verse 1 do you know when the mountain goats give birth do you watch when the doe bears her fawn? Do you count the months till they bear? Do you know the time they give birth? They crouch down and bring forth their young. Their labors are ended. Their young thrive and grow strong in the wilds. They leave and do not return. Verse 5. Who let the wild donkey go free? Who untied its ropes? I gave it the wasteland as its home, the salt flats as its habitat. It laughs at the commotion in the town. It does not hear a driver shout. It ranges the hills for its pasture and searches for any green thing. 
Will the wild ox consent to serve you? Will it stay by your manager at night? Verse 10. Can you hold it to the feral, feral with a hardness? Will it till the valleys behind you? Will you rely on it for its great strength? Will you leave your heavy work to it? Can you trust it to haul in your grain and bring it to your threshing floor? The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully. Though they cannot compare with the wings and feathers of the work, she lays her eggs on the ground and lets them warm in the sand. Verse 15. Unmindful that a foot may crush them, that some wild animal may trample them, she treats her young harshly as if they were not hers. She cares not that her labor was in vain, for God did not endow her with wisdom or give her a share of good sense. Yet when she spreads her feathers to run, she laughs at horse and rider. Do you give the horse its strength or clothe its neck with a flowing mane? Verse 20. Do you make it leap like a locust, striking terror with its proud snorting? It paws fiercely, rejoicing in its strength, and charges into the fray. It laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. It does not shy away from the sword. The quiver rattles against its side, along with the flashing spear and lance. In frenzied excitement, it eats up the ground. It cannot stand still when the trumpet sounds. Verse 25. At the blast of the trumpet, it snorts, Aha! It catches the scent of battle from afar, the shout of commanders and the battle cry. Does the hawk take flight by your wisdom and spread its wings toward the south? Does the eagle soar at your command and build its nest on high? It dwells on a cliff and stays there at night. A rocky gra- crag is its stronghold. From there it looks for food. Its eyes detected from afar. Verse 30. Its young ones feast on blood. And where the slain are, there it is. That completes chapter 39. Chapter 40. Um, in uh, Streetlights, the group, uh, Job chapter 40 is like one of my favorite ones that they do. Just like with the music and the way they say it, it's like. I can just like picture if I can like choreograph if I can do the production of the video in my mind I mean in real life of how I see it in my mind in that chapter in Streetlights it'd be a man to pick it as Job and he somehow gets up or I don't know if he's standing up when God's talking to him or if he's laying down where whatever he is but it shows him starting from his feet And while God's talking, it's going up and up and up through his whole body, right? To his head. And then it's it's showing a green screen or like like a flashback look of everything God's talking about. The eagle or in this chapter, like the Leviathan or the behemoth or what have you. And 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 it's showing as well as going up Job's body, his legs, his stomach arms and head to his eyes where he's just like astonished you know like he's just listening and it's 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 giving glimpses of everything god's talking about that's why i envision in my mind when i see this like if we were make if we were to make a small skit a movie of this that's what i would do Um, i think it'd be pretty cool you know you got to make it I don't want to use the word dramatic, but got to make it live, like, like, you know, like, like, like real, like, like big time, like God's talking, you know. So chapter 40, verse 1, the Lord said to Job, will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. Then Job answered the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. 
Verse 5, I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. I think other translations say whirlwind, something else. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Isn't that like, man, God's like, brace yourself like a man. I'm going to ask you some questions, and you're going to answer me. Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's, and can your voice thunder like his? Verse 10. Then adorn yourself with glory and splendor, and clothe yourself in honor and, and majesty. Unleash the fury of your wrath. Look at all who are proud and bring them low. Look at all who are proud and humble them. Crush the wicked where they stand. Bury them all in the dust together. Shroud their faces in the grave. Then I myself will admit to you that your own right hand can save you. Verse 15. Look at Behemoth, which I made along with you, and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength it has in its loins, what belly in the muscles of its what power in the muscles of its belly. Its tail sways like a cedar. The sinews of its thighs are close knit. Its bones are tubes of bronze, its limbs like rods of iron. It ranks first among the works of God. Yet the maker can approach it with his sword. Verse 20, the hills bring it their produce, and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the lotus plants it lies, hidden among the reeds in the marsh. The lotus conceal it in their shadow. The poplars by the stream surround it. A raging river does not alarm it. It is secure, though the Jordan should surge against its mouth. Verse 24, can anyone capture it by the eyes or trap it and pierce its nose? That completes chapter 40. Chapter 41. Verse 1, can you pull in Leviathan with the fish hook or tie, its, tie down its tongue with the rope? Can you put a cord through its nose or pierce its jaws with a hook? Will it keep begging you for mercy? Will it speak to you with gentle words? Will it make an agreement with you for you to take it as your slave for life? Verse 5. Can you make a pet of it like a bird? Or put it on a leash for the young woman in your house? Will traders barter for it? Will they divide it up among the merchants? Can you fill its hide with harpoons or its head with fishing spears? If you lay a hand on it, you will remember the struggle and never do it again. Any hope of sub subduing it is false. The mere sight of it is overpowering. Verse 10. No one is fierce enough to rouse it. Who then is able to stand against me? Who has a claim against me that I must pay? Everything under heaven belongs to me. I would not fail to speak of Leviathan's limbs, its strength and its graceful form. Who can strip off its outer coat? Who can penetrate its double coat of armor? Who dares open the doors of its mouth, ringed about with fearsome teeth? This verse 15. Its back has rows of shields, tightly sealed together. Each of it, each is so close to the next that no air can pass between. They are joined fast to one another. They cling together and cannot be parted. Its snorting throws out flashes of light. Its eyes are like the rays of dawn. Flames stream from its mouth. Sparks of fire shoot out. Dragon? Verse 20. Smoke pours from its nostrils, as from a boiling pot over burning reeds. 
Its breath sets coal ablaze, and flames dart from its mouth. Strength resides in its neck. Dismay goes before it. The folds of its flesh are tightly joined. They are firm and immovable. Its chest is hard as rock, hard as a lower millstone. Verse 25. When it rises up, the mighty are terrified. They retreat before its thrashing. The sword that reaches it has no effect, nor does the spear or the dart of the javelin or the javelin. Iron it treats like straw, and bronze like rotten wood. Arrows do not make it flee. Sling stones are like chaff to it. A club seems to it, but a pierce of straw. It laughs at the rattling of the lance. Verse thirty. It undersides are jagged postures, leaving a trail in the mud like a threshing sledge. It makes the depths churn like a boiling cauldron, and stirs up the sea like a pot of ointment. Stirs up the sea. Hmm. It leaves glistening wake behind it. One would think the deep had white hair. Nothing on earth is its equal, a creature without fear. It looks down on all that are haughty. It looks down. It is king over all that are proud. This also could be referring to an alligator or crocodile or something. Or hippopotamus, they say. All right, that completes chapter 41, and we're in the last chapter. All ready. Chapter 42, verse 1. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, Who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, Listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Verse 5, my ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Epilogue, verse 7. After the Lord had said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I am angry with you and your two friends, because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken the truth about me, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Terminite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Tophar the Namathite did what the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. Verse 10. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble the Lord had brought on him, and each nor his house that the Lord had brought on him. And each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the later part of the Job of Job's life more than the former part. He had fourteen thousand sheep, six thousand camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys, and he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemimai, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapuch. Verse fifteen Nowhere in all the land were there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters. Nice. And their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. Verse 16. After this, Job lived a hundred and forty years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. And so Job died an old man and full of years. That completes the book of Job. Wow. Well, we, that was fast. <laughs> well, yeah, that was, um, man. 
I love that God restored everything Job had, but even more. You know, that's just awesome. It's like, yes, God can do that. All right. Now we got the longest book in the entire Bible. And that is the book of Psalms. Mostly written by David. Are you ready? Am I ready? Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's get it done. Starting the book of Psalms, book one, Psalms 1 to 41. Psalms 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That completes verse 2. Actually, in my um, um, curriculum that I wrote, I put this verse on there. Alright, verse 3. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Verse 5. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. And that completes Psalm 1. Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up. And the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Verse 5. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with the rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Verse 10. Therefore, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son, or he will be angry, and your way will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Psalm 3, a psalm of David, when he fled from his son Absalom. Verse 1. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. My glory, the one who lifts my head high. So remember, this is, I think, uh, we're talking about in the book of First, Second Samuel. Um, so it's pretty cool because later we're, that we're reading like his psalms that he wrote. So I guess it's like, you know, his personal journal, you know. I call out, verse 4, I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. Verse 5, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord. Deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. Dang. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessings be on your people. That completes Psalm 3. Psalm 4. From the director of music with stringed instruments, 
a psalm of David, verse 1. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Man, that's, that's how I've been feeling, you know? And it's okay to feel like that. Why? Because David felt like that. It's in the Bible. I've been feeling like that all day yesterday, man. Like, Lord, answer me, please. What is going on? You know? All right. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you, will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Verse 5. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy. When their grain and new wine abound, in peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. That completes Psalm 4. Psalm 5, for the director of music for pipes, a psalm of David, verse 1. Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God. For you, I for to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expedently. For you are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. With you, evil people are not welcome. Verse 5, the arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful you, Lord, detest. But I, by your great love, can come into your house. In reverence I bow down toward your holy temple. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they tell lies. Verse 10. De declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But lay all who take refuge in you be glad. I like that. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with the shield. That completes Psalm 5. Psalm 6. For the director of music with stringed instruments, according to Sheminith, a Psalm of David. Verse 1. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord. For I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Verse 5. Among the dead no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil. For the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. Verse 10. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They will turn back and suddenly be put to shame. And that completes Psalm 6. Psalm 7. A Shigenian of David, which he sang to the Lord concerning Cush, a Benjamite, verse 1. Lord my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me. Or they will tear me apart like a lion and rip me to pieces 
with no one to rescue me. Lord my God, if I have done this and there is guilt on my hands, if I have repaid my alley with evil or without cause, have robbed my foe. A lot of this reminds me of the military days. Verse 5. Then let my enemy pursue and overtake me. Let him trample my life to the ground and make me sleep in the dust. Arise, Lord, in your anger. Rise up against the rage of my enemies. Awake, my God, decree justice. Let the assembled peoples gather around you, while you sit enthroned over them on high. Let the Lord judge the peoples. Vindicate me, Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity, O Most High God. Bring to an end the violence of the wicked and make the righteous secure. You, the righteous God, who probes minds and hearts. Verse 10, my shield is God most high. Magani. It's Hebrew. Who saves the upright in heart. Verse 11, God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. If he does not relent, he will sharpen his sword. He will bend and string his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapons. He makes ready his flaming arrows. Whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. Verse 15. Whoever digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit they have made. The trouble they cause recoils on them. Their violence comes down on their own heads. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. And that completes Psalm 7. Psalm 8, for the director of music according to Geteth, a Psalm of David, verse 1. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. That completes verse 3. That reminds me of, uh, there's a, a, a man, Jonathan Ogden, or Ogden, on YouTube. He creates great, great music. Highly recommend. Um, as a matter of fact, I might just find um, a, a song by him and play it at the end of this video. Or uh, put a link. Because he, he, refer he references this. And it just, it just reminds me of California, man. Oh, the good times in California. The good times. I miss my fellowship there. I miss my friends over there. I do. Verse 4. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. Verse 5. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild. The birds in the sky and the fish in the sea. All that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. That completes Psalm 8. Psalm 9. For the director of music to the tune of the death of the son. A Psalm of David. Verse 1. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. I love it when they say that. Most High, Most High God, El Elyon. I love it, it's just it's so raw. Verse 3. My enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause, sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. Verse 5. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. 
even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Verse 10. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing the praises of the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death, that I might declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. Verse 15. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked go down to the realm of the dead. I have this, uh, I wrote hell. All the nations that forget God, the God will never f forget the needy. The hopes of the afflicted will never perish. Arise, Lord, do not let mortals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Stri <laughs> Verse 20. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know they are only mortal. That completes Psalm 9. Psalm 10. Verse 1. Why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In his arrogance, the wicked man hunts down the weak, who are caught in the schemes he devises. He boasts about the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. Verse 5. His ways are always prosperous. Your laws are rejected by him. He sneers at all his enemies. He says to himself, nothing will ever shake me. He swears, no one will ever do me harm. His mouth is full of lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait near the villages. From ambush he murders the innocent. His eyes watch in secret for his victims. Like a lion in cover, he lies in wait. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off in his net. Verse 10. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, God will never notice. He covers his face and never sees. Arise, Lord. Lift up your hand, O God. Do not forget the helpless. Why does the wicked man revile God? Why does he say to himself, he won't call me to account? But you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it, in, take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Verse 15. Break the arm of the wicked man. Call the evildoer to account for his wickedness. That would not otherwise be found out. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. Defending the fatherless and the oppressed so that mere earthly mortals will never again strike terror. And that completes Psalm 10. Psalm 11. For the, for the director of music of David, verse 1. In the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me, Flee like a bird in your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. Verse 5. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence. He hates with the passion. On the wicked he will rain, fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous, he loves justice. The upright will see his face. That completes Psalm 11. I like that. 
For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. I like justice, man. I'm glad I can share that with my God. I have, uh, there's a man named uh, Blake Stimson. Shout out, Blake. I haven't heard from you in years, man. Hope you're all right. Um, he was actually my roommate for a little bit in uh, 29 Palms, California, the Marine Corps. And, um, man, real chill guy, real chill. Um, he was actually my crew chief, too, at one point. Um, and I remember we were talking one day. He's like, man, when I, when I see you or when I talk to you, I'm going to call you Justice. Every time I see you, Justice. <laughs> Because there was a lot of things happening, man, in, in the Marine Corps that I saw. And it was just like, like I felt like David here. It's like, Lord, like, why are you letting this happen? You know, like, there's some evil schemers here, man. Anyway, Psalm 12. For the director of music, according to Sheminath, a song of David, verse 1. Help, Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. He was saying that back in that time. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Verse 2. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. May the Lord silence all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. Those who say, by our tongues we will prevail, our own lips will defend us. Who is Lord over us? I don't know why I just thought about that completes verse 4. I don't know why I thought about this, but like maybe the Lord permits that because that's the only satisfaction those guys will ever get in life. And maybe that's the satisfaction that they will need to keep them going for some time. I don't know. Verse 5, because the poor are plundered and the needy groan, I will now arise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. You, Lord, will keep the needy safe and will protect us forever from the wicked who freely strut about when... What is vile is honored by the human race. That completes Psalm 12. Looks like I got four knees. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I haven't looked at the time once. I don't want to look at it because it goes faster when I don't look. Psalm chapter 13. For the director of music, a psalm of David, verse 1. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. Verse 5. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise. For he has been good to me. That could be Psalm 13. Oh, crap, I looked. It just turned to one hour. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. Not, not too shabby, not too shabby. Um, halfway done, right? 50%.
times in the Marine Corps they were um, I do miss having field day at the barracks and field day is basically you, you clean up your room and you get inspected uh, every Thursday right and I liked when everyone had to do that I actually like that when we all would have to sit out stand outside and wait for them to inspect our room we're all cleaning because we're all I'm, I'm knowing what everyone's doing and we're all cleaning together you know well you and your roommate are cleaning together but everyone else is doing the same obviously in their own rooms and you know it smells good you know you got your cleaning supplies you got your fabuloso the guys like that and um You know, you got your Febreze or whatever. You got your air fresher, maybe even a candle. I don't know if you're supposed to add candles, but you know, it smells good. Everything's clean. It smells so clean. It smells so good. And then you know, you feel day secure. It's like 20 hundred. It's like 8 o'clock p.m. You're done finally. And uh, you get to, you know, you could go to the gym or you can just hang out, chill in your clean room and. Um, you can go hang out with the guys. You can go do something. You can go off base and go out to eat. And then you go back to a clean room. It smells really good. Knowing that you got PT at 05 in the morning with the company. And um, and then you know it's going to be a short day on Friday because, I don't know, it's going to be a 72. You get a, you get a, a, you know, a nice long weekend with a short work day. You know, you get off at like... 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, everyone's in good spirits and high spirits, and, um, and then you're off for the weekend, and everyone just leaves the barracks, everyone just does what they want, you know, you can go to Anaheim, California, you can go to um, LA, San Diego, you can do whatever, you can go wherever you want, man, just go, you know, sometimes you gotta fill out a sheet where you're going to, um, Man, I, that was, yeah, I missed that. I missed that. Yeah, I missed all that. Feel lonely. Feel lonely. There it is. Feel freaking lonely. It's like these organizations such as the Marine Corps, or even in my high school football, right? They were so structured, so structured in a way where we were doing this at this time, this day of this month. And it was pretty consistent. And yet in the Christian faith, I hardly see that. What's the most important thing in this whole world lacks that, in my opinion. Like how? Like how? Shouldn't we have an academy for Christians to go to who are serious about the faith and, and we, can, we can build them up as godly men? give them situational problems that happen in real life, can show them love and truth, give them scriptures to memorize, PT together, work out together, be brothers, actual brothers together. Be healthy, be clean together, do things together, have fellowship together. Like, do I have to go make that? Do I have to build a company, some type of company, and, and go do that? Because I don't see it anywhere. For adults. 
And it doesn't sound like a bad idea. I mean, I've been thinking about this for some for some years. You know, because I remember telling um, uh, Denton Lomenzo, I used to live with the, the Lomenzos in California, Southern Cal. And um, I remember telling him one day, you know, like building that, a mind, body, spirit type of institution where, you know, Christians can come, brothers in the Lord, and, you know, get fit together, right? Get fit together, read the word together, eat together, live with each other for a certain, a certain amount of time, like a boot camp, you know? Wake up together, to life together. Doesn't that sound fun? That sounds fun. And, um, fast together. I, I would probably imp implement a fasting regimen. Um, what else? Definitely a lot of reading, re reading scripture, questions, classes, meetings, fellowship, and ways of like going to the beach. If, if, if we're on the coast, we're going to go to the beach. We're going to go to the beach for sure. Um, and not make it to where it's so stressful as a military boot camp or a military institution of some sort. But make it to where it's... It's the most remarkable thing you could ever go through. The most remarkable thing, the most memorable thing that you can go through with brothers in Christ. You can have fun, you can laugh, you can enjoy. Honestly, you're just being away from home for about seven weeks. Seven weeks. And this is what I'm doing with myself. I'm implementing my own seven-week spiritual boot camp where I'm reading two hours of scripture Monday through Friday for seven weeks and a 30-minute uh, teaching of a, of a Christian teacher of some sort Monday through Friday as well. So those are my thoughts. Those are my plans. My plans. <laughs> they might be my plans. I don't know. Who knows? I just yearn for it, man. I feel like I'm dying out here. You don't got, you don't got fellowship, man. They're dying, man. Dying. Psalm 14 for the director of music of David, verse one. The fool says in his heart, "There is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are are vile." There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there any are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good. Not even one. Does all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord. Verse 5. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread. For God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. That completes Psalm 14. Psalm 15, the Psalm of David, verse 1. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind. Verse 5, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe, 
against the innocent. Whoever does not, whoever does these things, will never be shaken. That completes Psalm 15. Psalm 16, a victim of David, verse 1. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom it is all my delight. Those who run after the other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out lib libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Verse 5. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at right, my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Verse 10. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your father, your faithful one, see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. That completes Psalm 16. I had this thing about my old friend Paul, Paul Bryan, out of Cole City, Illinois. We had some really good times together. At the same time, we've had some maybe not so good times and um, in, in, in times of... Um, Uh, distorting one's mind, I should say, and uh, put it at that. Um, not not holy things, but man, I would laugh with this guy, and to have a friend that you can laugh with is is so remarkable. Um, I miss him. I miss the good times we had. I miss when we played football together. We would do Oklahoma drills in his in his side of his house. <laughs> And he would tackle me, and then I looked to my side, and there's dog crap. Like, I almost got tackled in dog crap, and we start laughing. Or when, um, you know, we just do silly things. I remember one time he was shooting this girl from the second floor with the airsoft gun. Oh, my gosh. And he got in trouble, man. The police came, actually. That was pretty scary. I should have got in trouble, too. Shoot. I was with him. But, um... He just had to sign something. I don't know. Um, thinking about it, he was one of my closest friends in Cole City. Yeah, Paul Bryan. I haven't heard from him in months, years. Hope he's alright. I don't know where he's at, what he's doing. I would love to see him. I would love to be good company with him, to him. Do good with him and not bad. We can still do good and laugh. Psalm 17, verse 1. A prayer of David. Hear me, Lord, my plea is just. Listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. It is not rise from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Oh, excuse me. Though you probe my heart, though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. Amen. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people try to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. Through, the, through what your lips have commanded, verse 5, my steps have held to your paths. My feet have not stumbled. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love. You who save by your right hand those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me from my mortal enemies who surround me. Verse 10. They close up their callous hearts 
and their mouths speak with arrogance. They have tracked me down. They now surround me with eyes alert to throw me to the ground. They are like a lion hungry for a prey, like a fierce lion crouching in cover. Rise up, Lord, confront them, bring them down, for your sword rescue me from this from the wicked. With your sword, rescue me from the wicked. By your hand, save me from such people, Lord, and those of this world whose reward is in this life. May what you have stored up for the wicked fill their bellies. May their children gorge themselves on it, and may there be leftovers for their little ones. Verse 15. As for me, I will be vindicated and will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. And that completes Psalm 17. Psalm 18. For the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, verse 1, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. Verse 5. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils, consuming fire came from his mouth, burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down, dark clouds were under his feet. Verse 10, he mounted the cherubim and flew, he soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him. The dark rain clouds of the sky, out of the brightness of his presence clouds advanced, with hailstones, hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven, the voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. With great bolts of lightning he routed them. Verse 15, the valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare. At your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Verse 20, the Lord has dwelt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I am not guilty of turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him, and have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness. I love that. According to the cleanness of my hands in the sight. Like, that's how I'm feeling, God. Like, please reward me, like, of my righteousness. I feel like I'm one of the very few who's doing a lot of righteousness, man. Only he knows, though. Verse 25. To the faithful you show yourself faithful. To the blameless you show yourself blameless. To the poor you show yourself pure. But to the devious you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but bring low those who are haughty. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help I can advance against the troop. With my God I can scale a wall. Verse 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. 
He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. Verse 35. You make your saving help my shield, and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet, so that my ankles do not give way. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with strength for battle. You humbled my adversaries before me. Verse 40. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight, and I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord. But he did not answer. I beat them as fine as wind-blown dust. I trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of the people. You have made me the head of nations. People I did not know now serve me. Foreigners cower before me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. Verse 45. They all lose heart. They come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God, my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes. From a violent man you rescued me. Therefore I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing the praises of your name. Verse 50. He gives the, great, the king great victories. He shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and his, and his descendants forever. That completes Psalm 18. Psalm 19. For the director of music, a psalm of David, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. Verse 5. It is like a bridge groom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at the one at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to their heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. Verse 10. There are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my, my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. That completes Psalm 19. Psalm 20, for the director of music, a Psalm of David, verse 1. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Verse 5. May you shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now this I know. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. I like that. What type of victory? He answers him from the heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. That completes Psalm 20. 
Psalm 21, for the directive music, a Psalm of David, verse 1. The king rejoices in your strength, Lord. How great is his joy in the victories you give. You have granted him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. You came to greet him with rich blessings and placed a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. Verse 5. Through the victories you gave, his glory is great. You have bestowed on him splendor and majesty. Surely you have granted him unending blessings, and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. Through the unfailing love of the Most High, he will not be shaken. Your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your right hand will seize your foes. When you appear for battle, you will burn them up as in a blazing furnace. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath, and his fire will consume them. Verse 10. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, their posterity from mankind. Though they plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes, they cannot succeed. You will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with drawn bow. Be exalted in your strength, Lord. We will sing and praise your might. That completes Psalm 21. Psalm 22. For the director of music to the tune of the doe of the morning. A Psalm of David, verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you have enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. And you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. Verse 5. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man. Scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see the mo the mo all who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. Verse 10. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me. For trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their, they, their prey open their mouths wide against me. Though they plot evil against you, wait, 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 I'm sorry. I am, verse 14, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. Verse 15, my mouth is dried up like a posturd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. Who else did they do that for? They did it to Jesus. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword. My precious life from the power of the dogs. Verse 21. Rescue me from the mouth of the lion. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name, your name to my people. In the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. 
for he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. Verse 25, from you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. All the, all the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Verse 30. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn. He has done it. That completes Psalm 22. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green, in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that completes Psalm 23. Psalm 24 of, of David, a psalm, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Verse 5. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindicate from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your hand, heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Verse 10. Who is he, this king of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the king of glory. the king of glory that completes Psalm 24 Psalm 25 of David verse 1 in you Lord my God I put my trust I trust in you do not let me be put to shame nor let my enemies triumph over me no one who helps in you will ever be put to shame but shame will come to those who are treacherous without cause Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Verse 5. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of, of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Verse 10. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant for the sake of your name. Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity and the descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confines in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. Verse 15. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. 
Look on my affliction and my distress, and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies, and how fiercely they hate me. Verse 20. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my Lord, or my hope, Lord, is in you. Deliver Israel, O God, from all their troubles. That completes Psalm 25. Psalm 26 of David, verse 1. Vindicate me, Lord, for I have, a, I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord and I have not faltered. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for I have always been mindful of your unfailing love and have lived in reliance on your faithfulness. I do not sit with the deceitful, nor do I associate with the hypocrites. Verse 5. I abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, Lord, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling all of all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. Do not take away my soul along with sinners, my blood with those who are bloodthirsty. Verse 10, in whose hands are wicked schemes, whose right hands are full of bribes, I lead a blameless life. Deliver me and be merciful to me. My feet stand on level ground. In the great congregation, I will praise the Lord. Psalm chapter 26, finished. I don't want to look at the time. Psalm chapter 27 of David, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Verse 5, For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Verse 10. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. That completes Psalm chapter 27. Psalm 28 of David, verse 1. To the Lord I call, you are my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who go down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help. As I lift up my hands toward your most holy place. Do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, who speak cord, cord, cordially with their neighbors, but harbor malice in their hearts. Repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. Repay them for what their hands have done and bring back on them what they deserve. Verse 5, because they have no regard for the deeds of the Lord and what his hands have done. He will tear them down and never build them up again. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. 
Be their shepherd and carry them forever. That completes Psalm 28. Psalm 29. A Psalm of David, verse 1. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the, in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf. Syrian like a young wild ox. Letter B, Syrian. Is, that is Mount Hermon. Okay. Uh, verse 7. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry, Glory! Verse 10. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. I remember Pastor Tim Bagwell always says this, always, all the time. The Lord is enthroned over the flood. <laughs> he said that a lot over COVID. Verse 11, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. That completes Psalm 29. Psalm 30, a psalm, a song for the dedication of the temple of David, verse 1. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name, verse 5, for his anger lasts only a moment. But his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. I have been learning that. Psalm 35, that's a good one. Verse 6 When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is grained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Verse 10, hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. And that completes Psalm 30. Should I check the time? Should I check the time? All right, I checked it. Got about 17 minutes left, not too shabby. Psalm 31. For the director of music, a Psalm of David, verse 1. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your, in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, since you are my rock and my fortress. For the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Verse 5. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoicing in your love. For you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not given me into the hands of the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish, anguish and my ears by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction, and my bones grow weak. 
Verse 11, because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery, for I hear many whispering terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust you, Lord. I say you are my God. Verse 15, my times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. I like that. My times are in your hands. Verse 16. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and be silent in the realm of the dead. Let your lying lips be silenced. For with pride and contempt they speak arrogantly against the righteous. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all, on those who take refuge in you. Verse 20, in the shelter of your presence you hide them from all human intricacies. You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love. When I was in a city under siege, in my alarm I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him. Excuse me. But the proud who pays back, he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. And that completes Psalm 31. Psalm 32 of David, a maskil b. Probably a literary or musical term. Okay. Verse 1. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away, through, through my groaning all day long for day and night. Your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped, as in the heat of summer. Verse 5, then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Almost done. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the, the mighty waters will will not reach you will, will not reach them you are my hiding place you will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance i will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go i will counsel you with my loving eye on you do not be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding but must be controlled by bit and brittle or they may not come to you verse 10 many are the woes of the wicked but the lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts on him Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous, seeing all you who are upright in heart. That completes Psalm 32, Psalm 33. Verse 1. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Verse 5. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Verse 6. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him, for he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. Verse 10. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purpose, purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever.
the purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, whose people he chooses, he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and, and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. Verse 15. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. Ooh, no warrior escapes by his great strength. Uh -huh. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in, in his unfailing love, to deliver from death and keep them alive in famine. Verse 20. We wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord even as we put our hope in you. That completes Psalm 33. Psalm 34, verse or, of David, when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech could drum him away and he left. <laughs> I remember that. Remember when I was reading David try to be insane before Abimelech? Cause this reminds me of my uncle, because my uncle tried doing that to get out of a ticket one time. All right, verse one, I will extol the Lord at all times. He will praise, his praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Verse five, those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see what, that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. Verse 10. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from selling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot their name from uh, blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. He delivers them from all their troubles. Verse eighteen: The Lord is close to the the brokenhearted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Verse 20, he protects all his bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked, the foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants, no one will take refuge in him will be condemned. That completes chapter 34. Almost done. Psalm 35 of David, verse 1. Contend, Lord with those who contend with me, fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and armor, arise and come to my aid. Brandish spear and javelin against those who pursue me. Say to me, I am your salvation. May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame. May those who blot my ruin be turned back in dismay. Verse five, may they be like chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them away. May their path be dark and slippery. May the angel of the Lord pursue, pursuing them, since they hid their net for me without cause, and without cause dug a pit for me. May ruin 
overtake them by surprise. May the net they hid entangle them. May they fall into the pit to their ruin. Then my soul will, re will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. Verse 10, my whole being will exclaim, Who is like you, Lord? You rescue the poor from those too strong for them, the poor and needy from those who rob them. Ruthless witnesses come forward. They question me on things I know nothing about. They repay me evil for good and leave me like one bereaved. Yet when they were ill, I put my sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. When my prayers returned to me unanswered, I went about mourning. And though for my friend or brother, I bowed my head in grief, as though weeping for my mother. Verse 15. But when I stumbled, they gathered in glee. As silence gathered against me without my knowledge, they slandered me without ceasing. Like the ungodly, they maliciously mocked. They gnashed their teeth at me. How long, Lord, will you look on? Rescue me from the ravages, my precious life from these lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. Among the th throngs, I will praise you. Do not let those glow over me who are my enemies without cause. Do not let those who hate me without reason. Maliciously wink the eye. Verse 20. They do not speak peaceably, but devise false accusations against those who live quietly in the land. They sneer at me and say, Aha, aha, with our own eyes we have seen it. Lord, you have seen this. Do not be silent. Do not be far from me, Lord. Awake and rise to my defense. Contend for me, my God and Lord. Vindicate me in your righteousness, Lord my God. Do not let them gloat over me. Verse 25, do not let them wink or think. Aha, just what we wanted, or say we have swallowed him up. May all, the, all who gloat over my distress be put to shame and confusion. May all who exalt themselves over me be cloaked with shame and disgrace. May those who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness. May those always say, The Lord be exalted who delights in the well-being of his servant. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness, your praises all day long. And that completes Psalm 35. Psalm 36. For the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord. Verse 1. I have a message from God in my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before their eyes. In their own eyes they flatter themselves, too much to de detect or hate their sin. The words of their mouths are wicked and deceitful. They fail to act wisely or do good. Even on their beds they plot evil. They commit themselves to a, shame, to a sinful course and do not reject what is wrong. Verse 5, Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies, your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O oh God! People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Verse 10. Continue your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. May the foot of the proud may come against me. May proud not come against me. Nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. See how the evil doers lie fallen, thrown down, not able to rise. That completes chapter 36. I might just stop right there. We have to 37, 38, 39, 40. Now right, we're just going to finish the first book. Chapter, or, yeah, chapter 37. Verse 1. Of David, I do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will be, they will soon wither; like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Verse five: Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. 
He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Verse 10, a little, a little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at home are at them, but the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. Verse 15. But their swords will pierce their own hearts, and their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster they will not wither. In days of famine they will enjoy plenty. Verse 20. But the wicked will perish, though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field, they will be consumed. They will go up in smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the, the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be destroyed. The Lord makes firm the, the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Verse 25. I was young, and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsake, or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. The offspring of the wicked will perish. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it, in it forever. Verse 30. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak what is just. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous intent on putting them to death, but the Lord will not leave them in the power of the wicked or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Hope in the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. Verse 35, I, will, I have seen a wicked and ruthless man flourishing like a luxuriant native tree, but he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless, observe the upright. A future awaits those who seek peace, but all sinners will be destroyed. There will be no future for the wicked. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. Verse 40. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. That completes Psalm 37. Psalm 38, Psalm of David, a petition, verse 1. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Your arrows have pierced me and your hands have come down on me. Because of your, of your wrath, there is no health in my body. There is no soundness in my bones because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. Verse 5. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crashed, crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. All my longings lie open before you, Lord. My sighing is not hidden from you. Verse 10. My heart pounds. My strength fails me. Even the light has gone from my eyes. My friends and companions avoid me because of my wounds. My neighbors stay far away. Those who want to kill me set their traps. Those who would harm me talk of my ruin. All day long they scheme and lie. I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the mute who cannot speak. I have become like one who does not hear, whose mouth can offer no reply. Lord, verse 15, Lord, I wait for you. You will answer, Lord my God, for I said, do not let them gloat or exalt themselves over me when my feet slip, for I am about to fall and my pain is ever with me. I confess my iniquity, I am, tr I am troubled by my sin. 
Many have become my enemies without cause. Those who hate me without reason are numerous. Verse 20. Those who repay my good with evil lodge accusation against me. Though I seek only to do what is good, Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly to, to help me, my Lord and my Savior. That completes Psalm 38. Psalm 39. For the director of music for Jeduthun, a psalm of, a psalm of David. Verse 1. I said, I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle in my mouth while in the presence of the wicked. So I remained utterly silent, not even saying anything good. But my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me. While I meditated, the, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. You have made my, my days a mere hand breath. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Everyone is but a breath, even though who secure, who seems secure. Surely everyone goes around like a mere phantom. In vain they rush about, heaping up wealth, without knowing whose it will finally be. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Save me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of fools. I was silent. I would not open my mouth. For you are the one who has done this. Verse 10. Remove your scourge from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hand. When you rebuke and discipline anyone for their sin, you consume their wealth like a moth. Surely everyone is but a breath. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for help. Do not be deaf for my weeping. I dwell with you as a foreigner, a stranger, as all my ancestors were. Look away from me that I may enjoy life again. Before I depart and am no more. That completes Psalm 39, Psalm 40. For the director of music of Psalm of David, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Verse 5. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us. None can compare with you, were I, were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, Here am I. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. Verse 10. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me, for troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May all who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. Verse 15, may those who say to me, aha, aha, be appalled to their own shame, but may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my redeem, my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. That completes chapter 40, last chapter of the book of 1 Psalms. Psalm 41, for the direct of music, Psalm of David, verse 1, Blessed are those who have regard for the weak. The Lord delivers them in times of trouble. The Lord protects and preserves them. They are counted among the, among the blessed in the land. He does not give them over to the desire of their foes. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and restores them from their bed of illness. I said, Have mercy on me, Lord. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. Verse 5. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? When one of them comes to see me, he speaks falsely while his 
heart gathers slander. Then he goes out and spreads it around. All my enemies whisper together against me. They imagine the worst for me, saying, A vile disease has afflicted him. He will never get up from the place where he lies. Even my close friends, someone I tr trusted, one who shared my bread, has turned against me. Verse 10, But many have heard, have mercy on me, Lord. Raise me up, that I may repay them. I know that you are pleased with me, for my enemy does not triumph over me. Because of my integrity you uphold me, and set me in your presence forever. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. And that completes book 1, Psalms 1 to 41 in Psalms. Thank you.